Good morning. And welcome to worship with the community of First United Methodist Church, Pasadena. Whether you are joining us online or in the sanctuary this morning, we're glad to share in this time of worship with all of you. If you're joining us online, you will find a link to this morning's bulletin in the video description. I invite you to stand as you feel comfortable and join me in this invitation to worship and have your hymnals open to number 503, which we will sing at the end of the invitation. You called me from the grave by name. You called me out of all my shame. The old has passed away. The new has come. Your Holy Spirit now lives within me. I am no longer bound by sin and darkness. I'm dressed in your royalty, and I see my past has been redeemed. Breathe on me, breath of God, so I shall never die but live with you the perfect life for all eternity. Amen. hymn is number 420 in the UM hymnal, Breathe on Me, Breath of God. Well, grand rising, everyone. 
Yay! As you can see, I'm holding down the fort again this morning. Yay! <laughs> so, oh, awesome. Yay, you guys are awake. That's good. Okay, Amy, Pastor Amy is preaching over at St. James this morning. So I will be her this morning for you all. So if you don't mind, please let us rise and pass the peace to one another. Peace and love. Oh, this is good. This is good. I hope you feel refreshed by sh uh, sharing the peace with one another and saying hello and catching up for like two seconds. Um, so I have some things that are coming up. For those of you who are visiting this morning, welcome. Hello to you. Glad you decided to join us this morning. My name is Reverend Mina. Now, Mahe, I am the associate pastor here. And if you are looking for things to do, your bulletin, this beautiful bulletin is wonderful because if you look on the back, there are a plethora of activities that are coming up. For one, we have a youth cabaret and auction that's coming up April 13th. The youth will be selling tickets in the fellowship hall. You can also go online and purchase tickets there. There will be a tile titled Cabaret. Um, that'll be April 13th at 5.30. Uh, United Women in Faith, uh, you have a meeting April 15th, or you're meeting April 15th at 1 p.m. Um, and then uh, Crop Walk is also coming up. You'll hear a little bit about it during children's time. It will be on the 21st. Um, it'll be a little after Earth Day, and uh, I think the blessing of the animals happens on Earth Day. And then uh, the crop walk uh, will take place at 1 p.m. But today's communion Sunday, so I'm not going to take up all the time telling you what's going on. Just check this out, or you can see Dory or myself um, and ask about things that are coming up. Okay. It's, oh, it's the kids. <laughs> So, I know, I just heard someone laughing at me. It's okay. <laughs> Children, from afar, left to the right, all the way in the back, wherever you are, come forth. Hi everyone, Hello. Heidi and I are here to tell you about Crop Walk. It's happening on Sunday, April 21st, which is Earth Day. You know what, this is actually a big tradition here in our church. I don't know if all of you have um, had a chance in the past to do this, but there are actually grandmas and grandpas out here that used to do this as youth, so I'm pretty excited to see this going on again this year. Um, we have, uh, 
you know, some help here too to explain about it. Uh, so, Brian. Well, since this is Heidi and I's first time being crop walkers, we thought it would be helpful to have Amir Khan join us, and he is the coordinator for crop walk for the western half of the country. Amir, could you share uh, what the crop walk is meant to demonstrate and how this work helps others? Good morning. Thank you for coming today. I appreciate for having me here. Yes, crop anger walk has been around since uh, for the past 55 years, raising millions of dollars uh, and helping those who need food in the country and as well around the around the world. 25% of the fund stays in the United States. 75% we support disaster and provide food around the country. I give you an example for myself. Back in 2000 in Afghanistan, when the U.S. came, we had no food, so. Humanitarian organizations like Church World Service provided us food that we, the, that, that we needed. That was the happiest meal that I had, and since that, that changed my life, that I'm still working for the past 24 years with the nonprofit organizations. Thank you very much for being, supporting the crop and work. This year, it's very big. Our office is really happy that this year, the Pasadena United Methodist Church is taking part with the crop and work. I really appreciate you all, and I will be around here to provide more information during the children's service, so I didn't want to take much of your time. And if you have any question, feel free to reach out to me. Thank you so much. Amir, thank you so much for being here today. So I'm, I'm excited because Amir is going to actually join us during Sunday school. We're going to have a one-room Sunday school and get a chance to kind of ask questions and hear a little bit more about what Crop, crop Walk does. Um, and actually, you know, it works both globally but also locally. Um, it supports our Friends Indeed um, program here. And so we're going to hear about some cool stuff that goes on both globally and locally, too. Um, <laughs> so um, while we're here, um, I think that we just wanted to cover and let you know that we do have a table out during coffee hour. And what can we do? What can the people here do to help support Crop Block, Brian? Well, there are two big ways you can help. One is come walk with us on uh, Sunday at 1 p.m., April 21st. Uh, whether you prefer a, sh prefer a short, easy walk or the full uh, three-mile version, you won't be alone. And also stop by our, our table at the coffee hour to find out more. Second, uh, you may make a donation uh, to s help the church's donation goal, uh, and we appreciate any amount. Um, we have flyers that will share more details on that, and it's also in the church newsletter. And we have a fun twist this year. So we have both of our pastors walking with us at Crop Walk this year, and whether you're going or not, you can sponsor one of them, and they will carry something that you can give them. It can be fun or sentimental. And I thought it might be fun to brainstorm both during Sunday school or maybe if you have some ideas right now about what they could walk with. Does anybody have some ideas of what our pastors might walk with that would be fun during the walk, the crop walk? Any ideas? Till, did you have an idea? Not to put you on the spot, but I heard you earlier talking about it. He told me he was going to take a lifesaver from Star Wars and ask one of them to carry it. I think you were talking to your daughter about it, too. Want to go over? What did you want to give her? Did you want to give her an old... Toot toot. <laughs> an old tutu. And those are some fun ideas, but there's also an opportunity for sentimental ideas. And you know, it's not just for kids. Do we have any adults that might want to participate and have the pastor take something for them? Let me see. I was talking to someone earlier that had, oh, Diane, you have an idea? What would you do? Well, my husband and I aren't going to be here. We're going to be out of town, and so we're not going to be able to participate. But I was thinking that I have a photograph of my mom and I's last um, uh, outing together before she passed away that I treasure. And so I thought maybe one of the 
ministers could either, I could send it to you on your phone if you're going to carry your phone with you so you could take pictures, or I could um, make a copy of it and give it to you to take with you. And so that would give me a, a good reason to donate money <laughs> to one of you if you were to do that for me. Thanks. Great example. And I'm looking forward to hearing more. So I'm, we're going to go now to Sunday school. Um, I think that we're going to do our prayer before we go. Um, but I'm really excited for all of you. Again, it's going to be on Earth Day, um, uh, directly after our Earth Day festivities on, on uh, the 21st. Awesome. Thank you, Brian and Heidi and Amir. And does someone want to volunteer to pray? Who's the brave soul out there? Anybody? Anybody out there? I guess I'm alone here. All right. Okay. Oh, someone wants to pray. Who's holding? Who raised their hands? Oh, Rose? No? Yes. Okay. Again, Rose. Yay. And she's doing it with a smile. God, thank you. God, thank you. For life. For life. And for your love. And for your love. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you. Thank you all have fun at church school. We come to the moment during service where we quiet ourselves and we open up our hearts and minds and souls to the presence of our Lord this morning. And as we do that, we just lift up anything and everything that is heavy on our minds and hearts that we no longer want to carry, or maybe there are things that we want to lift up in celebration and in memory to God. So we will do that. Um, and as you think about that, please take deep breaths in and out so you can center yourselves and ground yourselves this morning and do that as we listen to the Centering Song. Spirit, Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us this morning. God, as we still our hearts and ground ourselves, we breathe in your breath. Trusting, O oh God, that you enter into our bodies, touching the top of our heads to the bottom of our feet, cleansing us renewing us, filling us 
with newness, with joy, with unconditional love. God, we humbly bow our heads before you to thank you. Thank you for being an awesome God. Thank you for showing up for us every single day, for reminding us that you are always with us. God, we sit in this space with one another, thinking about things of the past or things of this past week, maybe things that are coming up and sometimes we worry, sometimes we get frustrated, God, and sometimes we get a little bit confused and lost and stressed out. And God, we just want to take this moment to just be in awe of you, to breathe in your breath. And as we breathe out, we release all things that do not give us life. God, we ask for your breath to be with us this morning in this service, to touch our hearts and our minds, to bring us clarity, to remind us of compassion and love, to pray for one another, to hold one another in our thoughts. God, there are so much going on, not just in our personal lives, but in the lives of our neighbors, in the lives of your people across the nation. There is war, there is poverty, there is hunger, there is loneliness, there is sickness, there is violence, there is evil, yet your breath, your breath, O oh God, your breath can come in and breathe life into us, new life, New life, God, that we can center on, that we can find hope in, that we can find joy in, that'll give us the energy and the strength to continue to move daily, to see the light at the end of the tunnel. So God, we give all things to you, things that we can't handle, things of this earth, things of the flesh. We give it to you, for you are the only one that can fix it. You're, only, you're the only one that can do something about it. And as we release it to you, O oh God, we continue to feel your peace. We continue to hold people across this nation in our hearts, in our minds, and in our prayers. And we continue to pray for one another, continue to show up for one another, and continue to love one another. Because God, you are real and you are alive, and we can only showcase that in the actions that we do daily. So God, we thank you for all that you have done. We lift all things to you, O Lord, and we say this in your son's name, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, the one who taught us to pray these words. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us Deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. The gospel reading this morning is from the 20th chapter of John. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors were locked where the disciples were, for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord! But he said to them, 
Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may continue to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Praise the Lord. It's okay, y'all. When you feel the spirit deep inside, you don't have to suppress it. Just let it out. <laughs> We're going to do something this morning. This is going to be our opening prayer. Can you help me? Can y'all help me? Okay. I like singing even when I'm off. <laughs> but because I feel the spirit of the Lord moving upon us, we're going to do it, okay? And thank you to the choir. You have just confirmed that I'm going to do this. <laughs> I'm going to sing a line. You repeat after me. We'll see how on tune we will become together. And after, we're going to sing it two times through. How's that? We good? We good? Okay. <clears throat> Let the Spirit of the Lord rise among us. Let the Spirit of the Lord rise among us. Let the Spirit of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. of God. And when we breathe in the Spirit, or when we breathe in the holy, sweet breath of God, we are able to let go. We are able to cling and lean on God and take God in. And we live, we truly live because the breath of God allows us to. Can I get an A? Genesis 2, verses 7 says, God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. Centuries later, in John 20, verses 22, Jesus shows up to his disciples and says to them, Peace be with you. He shows them his pierced hands inside and continues to say, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. So when y'all sang the song with me this morning, did you receive the Holy Spirit? In between the time of the first Adam in Genesis and the second Adam, who is Jesus, this breath that brought forth life is known as Ruach Kadesh, which means Holy Spirit in the Hebrew language. Depending on context, Ruach also means wind and air and breath. In the New Testament, the Greek word used for Holy Spirit is pneuma. Say pneuma. pneuma. Also, let's go back. Say Ruach Kadesh. See, now you guys know how to say the Holy Spirit in two different languages. 
When Jesus said to the disciples, receive the Holy Spirit, it could also say, receive the holy breath. This is quite powerful because the holy breath that the disciples received comes from a resurrected Christ. Just as God breathed into Adam and gave him life, Jesus, who rose from the dead, breathed God's breath into the disciples, bringing them peace, strength, and courage. Breath is so vital to our existence. We often forget to breathe. How many of you forget to breathe? I'm not the only one, right? Such a simple thing to do, but we human beings don't really think about it. Instead of taking deep breaths, we tend to panic and worry and stress and overthink things, which causes shortness in our breathing. Breathing is an incredible thing. From the moment we, we, we emerged from our mother's womb, our lungs are filled with the breath of God to let out that first cry and the breath of new life. Breathing is a natural and constant thing. We must do it to live. It is a part of us. When was the last time that you consciously thought about the act of breathing? Think about that to yourselves. Let's take a, break, a breath together. I love doing that, do you notice? <laughs> So as we take a breath together, I want you, when we inhale, think about all the things, the things, everything that is on your mind, that doesn't need to be on your mind, that doesn't need to sit on your heart and your soul. And when we release, we're going to let all of that go, okay? Because we're going to let the spirit in. You ready? Breathe in. And out. Don't you feel a little lighter? Do you feel a little bit better? Breath fascinates me. It fascinates me so much that I asked my good friend Google, <laughs> how many breaths do we take a day? So I found out on average at rest, an average person at rest takes about 16 breaths per, per minute. And I tried that on myself. I think I was thinking too much <laughs> and I counted 13. But while I was doing that, my big 120 pound uh, bull mastiff, half bull, bull mastiff, bulldog, dog was uh, laying next to me and he was snoring and so I decided I was going to count his breaths. And he came in, his name is Bubba, and Bubba came in at 10 breaths per minute. <laughs> Anyhow, on average, we human beings breathe about 960 breaths an hour, 23,040 breaths a day, 8,409,600 a year, unless you exercise, it's a little bit more. And a person who lives to be 80 will take about 672,768,000 breaths in a lifetime. Did you just get wowed? Because I just got wowed just hearing that out loud. <laughs> Our breath is the power that gives us life. When we breathe, it allows the human body to obtain the energy it needs to sustain itself and its activities. In order for us to breathe, we need what? Oxygen. In order to transport oxygen throughout our body, it needs blood to do that. So when we breathe in the oxygen into our lungs, Blood transports oxygen and nutrients to all the parts of the body so they can keep working. Blood also carries carbon dioxide and other waste materials to the lungs, the kidneys, and the digestive system so that it is removed from the body. Can you tell I did a thorough research? We cannot live without oxygen. All living things need oxygen. We also cannot live without blood. Without it, the body's organs could not get the oxygen and the nutrients they need to survive. Oxygen and blood work in perfect harmony to maintain life. Do you see or hear how genius God is? God is our oxygen that gives us life and Christ is the blood that sustains us. God created the air and respirations to show us how great, 
how great and immediate our need for God is. We needed God from the beginning of creation to have life, and we have always needed God, and we will always need God because you cannot exist without the breath of God. In Psalm 150, it says, let everything that breathes praise the Lord, praise the Lord. When was the last, the last time that you gave thanks to God for breath of life, that you thanked Jesus for the blood that runs in your veins? Somebody better say hallelujah, God is good. All right, Jesus, thank you for the blood. <laughs> Throughout scripture, it tells us that life of the spirit is in the breath of God and life of the flesh is in the blood. From the very beginning, God's spirit came forth and brought life into a formless, void, chaotic, dark earth. It was the word that was divinely released into the earth by the breath of God and that word became flesh. How blessed, how blessed are we to receive such grace filled with the breath of God. A divine and mysterious energy that, ca that we cannot see. John 3 verses 8 says, the wind blows where it chooses and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it is coming from or where it is going. You can't see the presence of the Lord, but Jesus says, blessed are those who don't see but believe. This breath is holy and brings about power spiritual power that came upon Thomas through experience. Thomas needed to see for himself, and Jesus knew that. So he showed up again to his disciples, this time with Thomas present to show him that he had been resurrected. The ministry of presence for Thomas was important for him. He needed the presence of Jesus. He needed to know that Jesus lives because then it confirms everything Jesus did and said when he was alive. Peace be with you, Jesus says, as he breathed into the space. Thomas does something that others didn't do. When Jesus shows up to the disciples a second time, when Thomas is there, immediately, Thomas says, as Jesus approaches him, and after Jesus tells Thomas to stop doubting and just believe, Thomas says out loud, my Lord and my God, my Lord and my God, a confession of faith that Jesus is indeed our Lord and our God, something that the others weren't able to do. Thomas has always gotten a bad rap because he wanted proof that Jesus was alive. Honestly, he was just being human. He was probably traumatized because he witnessed with his own eyes Jesus being brutally beaten and whipped and crucified. So it's normal to have doubts and questions and needing proof. There are times when our head simply cannot wrap itself around the idea that God is present and working in our lives. Or believing that things will get better or that there is light at the end of your tunnel. There will be times when our hearts are not courageous our minds will not be sound, our voices will not be voices of reason, and our emotions will not be in check. But guess what? It's all good. Jesus was resurrected last week. Jesus lives, therefore we have been resurrected, and we live. Jesus did the work. We get to live a new life, if we want but we have to choose it. We have to allow the breath of God to work within, through, and for us. Something happened when Jesus breathed on his disciples because when Jesus died, they were lost, they were confused, they were defeated, they were in fear of their life. They locked themselves up in the upper room and then Jesus magically appears and breathes on them and suddenly they are transformed to strong, courageous, purposeful, convicted disciples ready to share the gospel without hesitation. When you think about the stories in scripture, the breath of God gave prophets 
from the beginning, the power to serve according to God's will and to see things from God and of God. Even in the story of Ezekiel and his vision of the dry bones, God's breath brought physical and spiritual life to the dry bones. God says in the book of Ezekiel, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. Ezekiel himself says, I prophesied as he commanded me and the breath came into them and they lived and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. John the, Baptiz the Baptist baptizes Jesus in the Jordan River and the heavens opened up and God's spirit came down like a dove. And according to the book of John, the spirit remained on Jesus. The holy breath gave Jesus the power and the ability to work in his ministry, casting out demons, healing the sick, giving the sight to the blind, bringing people back from the dead, feeding thousands of people, forgiving sins, creating life where there was once death. Jesus then, hanging on the cross, crying out to God, I commend my spirit, and then taking his last breath. That should have been the end for Jesus, but it wasn't. It never was. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live, and everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. We all weep at the death of Jesus. We get angry at Judas and the Pharisees and blame this, blame them, but this was all part of the will of God. We must all celebrate the unconditional love behind this sacrifice. His life was not taken. He offered his life for us. Jesus said in scriptures, or he took, Jesus took his last breath so that we can have a new one. You see, when we give to God, God gives back more and more. When we accept and receive the Holy Breath, we trust that the Holy Spirit dwells within each of us, helping us, walking with us, comforting us, protecting us, speaking for us, and guiding us. That is the eternal promise of Jesus. The Spirit of the Lord is in this space and within each of us. All you have to do is let the breath of God rise among you. We are never alone. We don't have to look for God. Jesus said it is finished. Every year when we enter the Lenten season and experience the Holy Week and celebrate Easter Sunday, it is a reminder that Jesus has conquered the world so that we may have peace and take courage when we face persecution. Jesus says, peace be with you, peace I give you, my peace I, live, I leave with you, I do not give as the world gives, do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Give yourselves to the breath of the living spirit and let the breath educate, encourage, equip, and embrace you to be a better version of yourself daily. For those of you who may have lost like a loved one or even feel a sense of loss of self or have felt a void or for those of you who need a deeper relationship with Christ, who struggle and don't know what to do, who have felt so distant and feel so called to receive the breath of Christ this blessed morning, you can simply lift up your hands. Lift them up to God and let Jesus give you new spiritual life. Open yourselves up to receiving the breath of life. Take this time to just be with the Holy Spirit and let the Spirit of God heal your worried minds, your broken hearts, your ailing body. The last breath on the cross and the first breath of resurrection can help you be renewed and restored.
Empty yourselves. Empty yourselves of things that do not give life and let it be filled with the holy breath of God. Whatever burdens you are carrying, whether it's distractions, tomorrow's agendas, worries or stress over anything and all things of this world or the flesh, release that release it into the hands of our resurrected Christ and receive the holy breath that gives us new life. We invite all of your hearts and minds and souls to be open to the Spirit of God. Know that you are resurrected. Know that you have new life. Know that you have the peace of Christ within you. For those of you who are caring so much, for those of you whose hands are lifted up, asking God to shine upon you, to breathe into your lifeless mind, heart, and body, I pray these words for you. God, these hands that are lifted up to you, these thoughts that are thinking of you, these breaths that are asking for your breath, oh God, they are in need of your sweet, holy, and sacred breath. God, you know what is in the hearts and minds and souls of these individuals. God, they are your children, and God, they are asking you to breathe into them a life that restores them, a life that will allow them to feel joy and hope and forgiveness and mercy and reconciliation and peace and strength and comfort. Loving God, remind them of your grace and the sacrifice of our living Christ. Whatever they need, God, you know how to help them and fix them and show up for them. God, give them the courage and the strength to hold on to you and their faith and to never give up because you will never give up. God, let us hold one another in our thoughts and in our prayers and lead us to love ourselves and one another more and more daily. God, we surrender our all to you and we trust in your holy breath, God, your sweet holy breath. We give you all honor and we give you glory and we say this in the name of Jesus who lives, therefore we live. Amen. Friends, if we are honest with ourselves and with God, we are all seeking something. Some of us long for a place to belong. Others seek permission to be who we are made to be. Some of us are hungry for connection, hungry for justice, or hungry for a glimpse of the divine. No matter what is in your soul, longs, well, no matter what is in your soul, longs, it longs for something, and there is good news to be found here. So sit with that as we go to the prayer of dedication. The ongoing generosity of our congregation makes a difference in our community. Because of your support, we're able to offer music-filled and meaningful worship services, feed the hungry, build a community of love and joy for our families, offer classes, extend care to those who are grieving and alone, and share God's love around the world through our global partners in ministry. Your generous giving makes all of our ministries possible. Thank you very much. If you'd like to partner with us by making a financial gift today, you may place it in the wooden offering boxes near the doors, or use your phone to scan the QR code in the bulletin to access the church's secure online giving website. 
However you share your gifts today, we thank you for being here and for being a part of the ministry of First United Methodist Church. Please pray with me. Gracious God of light and hope, we bring our offering to your altar this morning, still riding the joy of our Easter celebration of your triumph o'er the grave. Scripture has reminded us that we have been given the pathway for new birth, the promise of an imperishable in heavenly inheritance, and the power of God's protection. Silent in the realization of these priceless gifts, we offer ourselves to make this good news known to those who have not yet heard the good news. With praise and thanksgiving, we dedicate these gifts. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. In the United Methodist Church, all who love God and are striving to love their neighbors are invited to share in this holy meal. Our communion elements are gluten and alcohol free so that all may share in the sacrament together. People of God, if, you are, if your seeking has led you here, if your weary heart followed breadcrumbs all the way to this sanctuary, then I have good news. You do not have to seek anymore. This table is God's table, so if you came here looking for justice, then rest in the comfort that all will be fed here. If you came seeking beauty, then let your spirit marvel at the beauty of community coming together if you are seeking a brush with the divine, then know that God is present in this ordinary meal. So kick off your walking shoes and let your weary heart stop the search. We are standing on holy ground. This is God's table. All are invited, all are welcome. In your bulletin, there is, um, under the great Thanksgiving, there, has, um, there are words for you to follow along. And I will say some things and then you'll respond. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. God of the lost and the found, surely it is right for us to give our thanks and praise for day after day we look for you. And day after day we find you in the laughter of children in the sun rising over the horizon, in the flowers of spring, 
Our seeking does not go unanswered, and for that we are grateful. When we're seeking peace, you give us a three-part harmony and the sound of the rain. And when we're seeking justice, your life reminds us that everyone is welcome at your table and none shall be turned away. And so we join our voices with all of creation to proclaim, holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, everywhere we see your glory. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of our Lord. So in addition to our gratitude, we also pray today for conviction. Do not let us get comfortable with half-hearted seeking. Do not let us grow numb to the suffering of this world. Make us relentless in our pursuit of justice, relentless in our consoling of the grieving, in our welcoming of the stranger and the feeding of the hungry. As we approach this table, may we recognize once more your life-giving pres presence with us. We remember Jesus shared a meal with his companions, his community, and his chosen family. Before he would be arrested, filled with love for them, he took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the meal, he took the cup, he blessed it and shared it, saying, this cup that is poured out is my blood of the new covenant for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me, in remembrance of all you have done to save us. We proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has And as we see and as we seek, Pour out your spirit on this ordinary bread and cup. May this meal be the nourishment we need to continue seeking you in the world. Until your promised day, we will pray. Until your promised day, we will seek, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. If I can have the communion stewards come forth to help us serve communion. The table of God is now open for all. All are welcome so let us all feast with one another.
Let us pray. God of manna and mustard seeds, we came to this table hungry and we leave feeling full, full of hope, full of promise, full of what could be. For we not only found glimpses of you at this table, but we caught a glimpse of the way things could be in a meal where all are welcomed and all are fed. Is there anything holier than that? So thank you for nourishing our curiosity alongside our spirit and our conviction. May we always seek you the way that you seek after us. With grateful hearts, we pray. Amen. Till we meet again. Go out into the world and know you are loved, you have purpose, and allow the breath of God to be with you and work within you. In the name of our God, His Son Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and the Holy Spirit, be with you as you leave. Amen. <laughs>